Hey guys, this is Jono. Uh, this video is a tutorial on how to calibrate the 3D level sensors above the tanks in our 400 area. So as of right now, our schedulers use these sensors so they can get a better idea of the contents of the tank without having to actually go out here. With safety cracking down on the use of the harnesses, it's no longer really feasible for these schedulers to be climbing over these tanks to check the levels. So we now have to get these uh, sensors really dialed in so that uh, these guys have a, have a, a good idea from their office of what we have actually in inventory of the tanks. So I've developed this Excel sheet right here, which is located in the public drive inside of a folder called Tank Room 3D Sensor Calibration. Uh, the purpose of this document here is so that automation, engineering, and the schedulers, uh, aka production, can work together. We can all access this file to keep track of the progress we've made and what is left to be done. So here is the actual file. You can see it. That's it. Uh, the tanks outlined in red are the ones that have been uh, pointed out by schedulers uh, to be not very accurate. Uh, these ones need attention first, obviously. So in tank 408, you have section A and you have section B. Uh, we need to calibrate it when, when 408A is empty as well as calibrating it when 408B or A is full. And then at the end, we're gonna go ahead and double check, make sure that it's, it's actually accurate uh, before we go ahead and consider it to be done. So today while I was making this tutorial, I actually uh, was working with tank 411B and I did calibrate it already when it was uh, full. So I've gone ahead and marked it. So this document is going to be how we all coordinate together across uh, our different departments. We all have access to this. Uh, whenever a tank is calibrated, I want you to come in and update this, mark that so that we don't go redo work. And then uh, at the end, the schedulers will use this to see if we're done and so that they can help us verify if our new calibration is indeed accurate, at which point, of course, they will mark X there, signifying that we're done. If not, of course, they'll just say no, and we can go ahead and recalibrate that, which hopefully we won't have to do. So, uh, now that we've got our organization out of the way, we can start to look at how we're actually going to calibrate. Um, along with this video, uh, I'm going to include a picture of the cable you'll be using. It's a green uh, M12 to Ethernet uh, converter cable. I guess you could say, um, and that's how you're going to be. You're going to be using the M12 to plug into the 3D sensor, and of course, Ethernet's coming back to your laptop. Uh, and then we're going to be navigating over to engineering maintenance, equipment user manuals, IFM, which is the brand of the sensor, of course. And within that folder, of course, you got your uh, user manuals. Uh -oh. And then I've actually put the software there that you're going to be needing as well. So again, with an engineering, equipment user manuals, IFM, you'll see this E3D200. That's going to install the effector software here, which is what we're going to be using to interface with our 3D sensor. Now, to actually get online with your 3D sensor, of course, this right here is a safe part, so you might not have that, don't worry about it. So we're going to go over here to connections, click IP address, it's going to bring us to this window here. I already had it open, sorry. Uh, you're going to want to click find sensors. And within here, just going to give it subnet to scan. So 192.168.0. Actually, I already know that the sensor's uh, IP is 192.168.0 since so I, if you're scanning for anyone, of course, just leave that at zero. We're going to hit add. Sorry. 255, 255. Add. And then we're going to say start scan. Now it's browsing that subnet. Uh, 
more sensitive. So of course blue, uh, 411B, which of course is the one I'm working on, pops up. Like I said, 192.168.069. You say OK. All right. Let's try one more time. I believe there's a way that we could uh, just open that sensor immediately from here. I don't want to do this without confusing that bookmark that I have because you guys don't have that. Right, so there we go. Just double click on the sensor from that list and it'll open up the sensor already. So what you're looking at here is what the sensor is actually seeing on a grayscale. So you can actually click on distance, you see it on a little bit more color added, and you can see you know, the green is further, or the blue is farthest away from the sensor, meaning this blue section is empty. And of course, as uh, the distance between the pile and the sensor decreases, that is that pile is growing. So of course, this is our peak here, uh, roughly 75 inches from the sensor. So from here, we're gonna wanna click on applications, and actually go in and make edits. This is the name of the device. This is the program that it's running. And of course, with these sensors, it actually does have digital inputs where uh, we can select which program to run on the fly. We're not using that feature though, so uh, just go ahead and double click here. Up, oh, edit. And now you'll be able to make modifications to uh, the program that it's running. So, with the new sensor, we did have to uh, adjust its scanning range. Because as you can see here, this is the actual uh, rail for the conveyor. We don't want to measure that as part of our pile height. So we're going to yeah, go ahead and close this in a little bit, cut all that out. So we're only looking at potatoes. You guys won't have to do this, uh, but I figured good to know if you open this up and you see that something's messed up you know maybe we're showing a couple little pixels of the rail like we don't want that so if you see that go ahead and crop it out that way we uh, get an accurate measurement as to our potatoes and not uh, how far away our rail is from our sensor so what we really are looking for here is IO configuration and <laughs> here uh, these are our set points right here. So this is what we're actually reading right now. And this is where we want to enter this value if we want that to be our new set point. So this is uh, why we actually need to come out when the tank is full and come back out when the tank is empty because that's the only way we're gonna actually get a accurate uh, value as to what the sensor is gonna read at those uh, levels. So, once the tank is full, you know, you come out and get your reading. Of course, that's going to be the smaller number because the distance between the pile and the sensor is small. And uh, if this tank is full right now, you're going to go ahead and just take this value and stick it right there. And you have to hit a sign, otherwise it will not actually stick. Your value will be overridden uh, as soon as you exit. So, uh, I entered this 76.4 earlier uh, when the tank was completely full since they have been using it. So, of course, uh, our distance has grown as our pile has moved away from the sensor and now we're no longer at max. But, um, yeah, so once you hit a sign, which I guess I could do, I didn't change these values, so it's fine. Next, to, uh, to finish up, to close out. And then that value is now updated. Uh, and again, of course, we're gonna to wanna to go back, enter, you know, 411B. I just calibrated it at full, so I'm gonna mark it. Don't forget to save. We're gonna open it. And that's basically it. So, again, this process will need to be done when the tank is actually full, 100% full. It'll also need to be done when the tank is 100% empty. That's the best way we're gonna get uh, really accurate data. All right, well, thank you all for your help, and uh, yeah, can't wait to see uh, how this all looks once it's all accurate and super convenient on our HMI. All right, thanks, guys.